I know this is an unpopular opinion, but is it just me or do most architects sound really pretentious? I know, I know most of you guys are probably like, whoa, how could you say that, Leon? And I feel you, but hear me out, my dudes. I myself am guilty of this pretentiousness that I speak of. And what I mean is that I often try to sound smarter than I really am. And this often happens when I'm talking to clients or like other professionals. I find myself using crazy ass sounding words that I barely know the meaning of. Like dissonance or morphology. Those words I don't really know the meaning of, I just use them. And I know everyone has that office mate or classmate that keeps using super very complicated architecture words just to confuse everyone around them. After many years of wondering why I suddenly turn into some sort of douchebag know-it-all smarty pants when talking to clients or other professionals, I finally found it deep within myself why this happens. So I found out that the reason why I use these fancy schmancy words whenever I talk is to make myself sound so much smarter than I actually am and therefore make myself look impressive. And I just recently realized that this was just a defense mechanism. It's supposed to be a, sh a shield. Never mind. So here in the Philippines, architects are very, very underappreciated. People just immediately dismiss you as someone who just does drawings or reads floor plans. And oftentimes, clients are surprised as to why we charge huge sums of money for the services that we have provided. Mula, cha-ching, cash money, bling, bling, y'all. <laughs> I mean, you can see it in their faces. Like once I tell them my professional fee, they act as if I rob them of their life savings. Or worse, they belittle my work by saying stuff like, Why do you charge so much? Or, It's only a few drawings. Why so expensive, man? And you know, it is this mindset of the people I encounter that makes me act super smart. Because in my mind, if I somehow act super smart and say a bunch of confusing ass words, they'll probably think that architecture really isn't as easy as just drawing and looking at a bunch of floor plans and stuff like that. My stomach real cold now, my dudes. Ooh. Ow. Supposed to roll this way. Oh. And you know, by doing so, I was officially a member of the hashtag pretentious gang squad. It's just lately that I've realized that being pretentious, not really that cool, my dudes. Just be yourself is what people who are secretly pretentious tell other people. No, dude. <laughs> Rolled the wrong way. I say if you know the meaning of the word and how to properly use it, then it's not pretentious if you use that confusing ass word. What? And that brings us to our main video content. 10 words that architects use and how to use them properly. Word number one is aesthetic. The basic definition of aesthetic is anything with concern to beauty or the appreciation of beauty. So basically one easy way to determine how to use aesthetic is to substitute it for the word design. For example, this house has a minimalist design. Just substitute design for aesthetic and say, this house has a minimalist aesthetic. And boom, instantly you look super smart. Word number two is juxtaposed or juxtaposition. The simple definition of this is contrast between one object that is close to another object or beside another object. For example, this bottle of water and then this battery, we put them close together. Now they are juxtaposed each other. And then all you got to do is describe the contrast between the bottle and the battery. So that water bottle looks refreshing in juxtaposition to that battery. There you go juxtaposition. Okay, here's another example. I have my cell phone and then I have this plan. So that cell phone juxtaposed to that plan looks extremely modern. Pro tip, as long as the person whom you're speaking to does not know the meaning of the word juxtaposition, you can use it however you damn please. Just substitute it to random words and you'll instantly sound super architect here. Okay, let's move on. Word number three, anthropometric. 
So anthropometric means anything related to the scientific study of the measurements of a human body. To put it in layman's terms, anything that could be measured using your body parts is uh, somewhat anthropometric. So for example, this bottle is way too big for me, probably designed to fit the hands of Shaquille O'Neal or someone larger. One way to use the word anthropometric in a sentence is to say that this bottle is not anthropometrically designed for people of my size. Which means to put it simply, this bottle was not measured in relation to my body size because it's too big for me. Thus, it is not anthropometrically designed for a small dude. Moving on to the fourth word. Word number four is facade. Okay, so if you've been around architects for a long time, you've probably heard this word at least once a week. So for those of you who do not know what this means, facade is a word used to determine the front of a building or any face of the building that faces the street or where people view the building from. Facade, the face of the building. Okay, so one key to mastering these architectural terms is to practice them daily. So here's what you do, guys. Go up to a random stranger on the street and make sure he's looking at the building and then tell him this. The facade of this building looks extraordinary. Look him straight in the eyes until he responds with amazement from the words that just came out of your mouth. He'll probably be like, this guy's words, he's such a visionary. What does facade even mean? And there you go. That is how to become a master of architectural words. Word number five, fenestration. Fenestration is basically a fancy word to describe holes or openings in a building's envelope. Again, envelope, one of those words architects overuse to describe the exterior walls of a building. But you know, it's easier to say than exterior walls. Envelope, one word, big brain. Okay, so this is how to use this word in a sentence. We're going to combine our fourth word, which is facade, and then this fifth word, which is fenestration. So go up to a building and say, the fenestrations on this building's facade is exquisite, magnifico. Just add any French sounding adjective to your sentence and bingo, bango, bongo, you're already talking like an architect. Moving on to word number six, hierarchy. So hierarchy is a system of organization ranking one thing higher above another. One of the most common uses of the word hierarchy in the architectural sense is when you describe the importance of one place to another. For example, the hierarchy of spaces I used in this floor plan clearly indicates which spaces are more important. And there you go. That's an easy way to slip in the word hierarchy into your sentence. Okay, we are now on to word number seven which is sustainable. Now, this is one of the words that architects love to use. To be honest, I think it's overused at this point. So the word sustainable describes anything that is related to the structure, which is environmentally responsible and energy efficient. Using this in a sentence is pretty straightforward. You just say that that roof that I have attached to your house is sustainable. Or I've used sustainable hollow blocks for this wall because I love nature. Word number eight, modern. Okay, so architects often use the word modern to describe any square pointy building and stuff like that. But in reality, there are only a few actual modern buildings. So the word modern is used to describe a design style that was championed by Le Corbusier and a few other notable architects back in the day. Usually modern buildings are all white, they have large windows and are on stilts and have minimal or no ornamentation on them. So when you say this thing is modern or that house is modern, as long as it fits those descriptions, then you use that word correctly. But if you use modern to describe the recent architectural designs of McDonald's restaurant, then I'm afraid you're misusing the word modern. Those designs are actually postmodern. So there you go. If you see a house that looks like this, specifically the Via Savoie by Le Corbusier, then you could call that house modern. Let's move on. Word number nine, ergonomics. To put things simply, ergonomics is basically considering human comfort when designing something. For example, this phone is not ergonomically designed because its edges are all pointy and it's bigger than my hand and it's hard to use but you know it looks cool so I'ma just deal with the ergonomic problem of this phone or this chair is not ergonomically designed because my butt hurts from sitting in front of this camera for just 10 minutes and describing all these things to you so let me just switch to a more ergonomically designed chair right there and there we go oh. 
this chair is more ergonomic. Let us move on to our last word. Okay guys, so for the last word, I'm gonna let you guys decide what word you think is overused in the architecture community. Leave it in a comment down below. Also guys, I have a new channel called Oliver Austria in which I do a bunch of behind the scenes of the videos I do here and some random vlogs of me doing some clay sculptures, reviewing shoes, and looking at other whatnots. So if you guys are interested in seeing me not doing architecture stuff, you guys could head on to that channel and subscribe. I'll put the links in the description below. Also, I will be speaking in the Filipino language in that channel. So if you guys could not understand Filipino channel, it's alright with me if you don't subscribe there. As long as you guys watch this video and learn something, I'll be super happy. Let's go my dudes! Anyways, thank you guys for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to be a part of the hashtag notification squad. I will see you guys on my next video. Flying peace!